Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Green Square Talks BattleBots prediction podcast. So, I present to you the second fight card of the 7th World Championship of BattleBots, and we got lots of good stuff coming in this one. So, first episode, we got to see quite a few banger fights, several big names, and we get to see several more once again, and I like a lot of the contents I see on here. We got three... We got three, in my opinion, main event worthy fights in this one. We get to see the debut of a couple more rookies, and then some other, and then some other big names and other fun robots in this fight card. So, yeah. Before I start talking about each of these fights one by one, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content if you li- if you like what you're seeing, of course. And as usual, reply down below with your predictions. I had, you know, there were a lot of people that replied with predictions last time, and even if you disagreed with what I had, what I was predicting for the previous fight card, I love to hear everyone's thoughts, because, like, this, even though we might not agree, like, that's kind of the fun part about this sport, at least, uh, not everything goes, like, how some of us might expect it to, like, especially for me, even though I did get six out of seven fights predicted right last time, but... Regardless, though, this is a tough fight card to predict, because, like, like the last fight card, these are all robots that, this is their first fight this season. We don't know how they're going to perform exactly. We don't know all the strengths, the weaknesses. We don't know how well their upgrades worked or didn't work. So, we're going to find out after this episode for these 14 robots. But, let's go ahead and get started here, where we got Hypershock and Sawblaze to lead it off. And that's going to be a banger of a fight like both these robots are very well known for simply sheer domination of their opponent and that's how they've won their matchups so yeah i'm predicting this is probably going to be a pretty one-sided fight at least because either what's i think what's either going to happen here is sawblaze is going to scoop up hypershock and then just land hit after hit with the hammer saw Similar to what they've done to most opponents that Sawblaze fought last season, and a couple seasons before that too. Then on the other hand, Hypershock. Will Bales typically likes to try to control the pace of the fight with the, with that robot, use the speed advantage, and simply, like, once he gets a hit on them, stay on them. Just control the pace of the fight here. But, yeah, so, basically, we know from the trailer that Hypershot gets flipped over in this one. However, Hypershot can drive upside down, even though it doesn't have a self riding mechanism, so that's not going to stop Sawblaze, at least. However, my big concern, though, is how well could Hypershot be able to survive a shot to the underside right there? And the other thing, which is the, which is actually the main reason why I am picking Sawblaze. Like, I'm not, I'm not going for Sawblaze based off of the trailer clip. Yep, and stuff like that, because I don't like to overanalyze stuff, and all that stuff backfires on me pretty badly whenever I choose to do stuff like that. But the reason why I'm going Sawblaze here is, uh, basically, um, basically, I think Sawblaze wins the ground game if these two robots go head on, which is what I predict is going to happen here. Well, possibly, because the other option is Will Bales has a bunch of donuts, and Get, and catches Sawblaze at the right time here, but JMO JMO is a good driver. Even though even though he does make driving mistakes every once in a while, which every driver does. Will Bales did. JMO has. Uh, yeah, e- everybody does. Uh, I'm probably I'm going to Sawblaze on this one because I think Sawblaze does have a better ground game, and so I think Sawblaze has a better chance at being able to dominate the fight and win it that way. But I wouldn't count on Hypershock. This fight could go either way, in my opinion. So, And I would not be surprised if Hypershock manages to pull off a devastating victory and start a major run. Because Hypershock, Hypershock did great last season, and I hope we'll get to see more success from Hypershock like what we got last season. Okay, next fight. Fusion and Emulsifier. So, this is Emulsifier's first fight, the first fight of BattleBots. And... It got paired up with Fusion, a really hard robot to prepare for, and probably one of the more inconsistent robots, at least, of the entire field. So, and I'm betting this is going to be a really good fight, like, not just based off of, like, the trailer clips, but just the fact that, well, the trailer clips are part of it, but 
th where I'm going is Battle Bots is hyping up this match a lot, making me think there's going to be a lot of action in this fight, whether it's a trailer clips, fight photos, stuff like that. Like, Battle Bots is hyping up this match, so I'm predicting there's going to be a lot of action, and I'm predicting we're going to get a really back-and-forth fight between these two. So, I'm going to Mulsifier in this fight. I'm going to go with the newcomer for this fight. Because, like, while I do think Fusion has the advantage with the fact that the Mulsifier can really only prepare... Like, like, while Fusion does have the advantage that it can... It's one of the hardest robots to prepare for with it being a vertical spinner and a horizontal spinner, I would be concerned about Fusion... A meltdown of Fusion happening in this matchup here. Because, like... Basically, I think either Fusion is going to dominate this fight with those two weapons and send Emulsifier flying. Because we know we know from the videos that Emulsifier can self-right through the vertical spinner. So I don't think that's going to stop Emulsifier that easily. Or we could see a Fusion meltdown. Unless if Emulsifier manages to get to the sides or get underneath the vertical spinner. I don't know, but uh, regardless, I'm going to go Emulsifier. I think this is going to be a great fight, though. And I'm really looking forward to this one. Fight number three, Mammoth and Valkyrie, and this, this is going to be an interesting one, because, like, on one hand, I would say this is a horrible matchup for Mammoth, because, like, there are so many, like, exposed areas on Mammoth where Valkyrie, basically, Val there are so many, like, support structures on Mammoth that Valkyrie could strike, and then that just caused Mammoth to just tip over and fall into pieces, kind of, if you get what I get what I'm talking about by that. So, but then, the reason why I say this is so interesting is, like, Mammoth actually didn't do that bad against Horizontal Spinners last season. Because, like, Ricky Williams, like, really didn't do that bad of a job against Horizontals. Because, like, because, like, even, th even though they took that brutal loss to Tombstone, even if, even if that was a judge's decision that was possibly controversial. Like, I'm mostly talking about the damage Tombstone did to Mammoth in that fight. And, like, it held up very well against Hijinks in that victory, too. Like, Mammoth's strategy is probably going to be, like, use that weapon there, there, which is pretty pretty good against Horizontals, which I'm... and. Uh, Try to slow down Valkyrie's spinner and control the and control the fight that way, whether it's controlling the fight or if Valkyrie loses its spinner. So how I think this fight's gonna go down, um, like, cause my big concern for Valkyrie though is the fact that even though like the fact that their weapon is hasn't been the most reliable in the past few seasons. Like it's had some great fights, regardless, and we've seen we see really seen that thing like work to its full potential and manage to tear apart some opponents. But then there are some fight, but then there were many fights where it died pretty quickly at the end of the match, and that's that's really what's been holding Valkyrie back for in, for the most part, in my opinion. Because like I feel most of Valkyrie's losses have been just because has been because of the loss of that horizontal spinner. But Valkyrie is under new uh, under new leadership this year because Lucy, who is a member of Sawblaze the previous few seasons, is running Valkyrie this year. Like, not that I'm saying that like Val Valkyrie was Valkyrie the the reasons for Valkyrie's uh non success due to that due due to the weapon issues it had were because of its former team because the former team did great running Valkyrie, regardless. So, but. I'm going to take a chance and go Valkyrie on this one, at least, which I think is probably going to be the safer pick, because, but, but what I'm saying is, here is, I think either Mammoth is going to, I think either Valkyrie is going to lose the spinner, whether it's reliability problems, or just Mammoth just jamming it up so easily, or Valkyrie is going to tear apart Mammoth, and either way, I think this will be an exciting match, and I can't wait to see it, so... Let's move on. We got Mad Catter and Whiplash. This is another main event worthy fight because on one hand we got two very pow two very powerful robots. Like cuz we got Whiplash, great control bot. Hopefully we get to see the spinner in this fight. Like I know Whiplash did bring the spinner and I know there is test box footage of Whiplash testing out the vertical spinner. So I think it is possible we could be seeing that thing this season, which I hope I hope we do cuz like I feel I feel Whiplash would have won a couple... I feel like there were a couple fights, like... 
I, f I feel Whiplash would have had a better shot at, like, the Cobalt and probably the Witch Doctor fight, too, if they had the Vertical Spinner there, maybe try to cause a little bit of damage it's to the opponent and that stuff, but, uh, yeah, so, and then on the other hand, these two are both well-driven robots, because Calvin Eva does, has been doing a fan fantastic job driving Mad Catter, and then Mad Vasquez is one of the best drivers in the entire sport, so... This is a tough call, in my opinion, right here. So, I think Whiplash is probably the lower-to-the-ground robot, if I take a guess, between the two of them. But, I'm going to go Mad Catter on this fight, because I think Mad Catter definitely has the more damaging weapon. Regardless, though, I think unless if, like, an out of the arena or something happens, I... Or, or maybe Mad Catter just gets an absolute flurry of shots. I think we're going to see a back... I'm predicting Mad Catter, but we're going to see a back-and-forth judges' decision battle here. Regardless, I think this is going to be a close fight. and Well, could be a close fight. Because on because we could just see Whiplash or Mad Catter dominate. Because, like, Mad Vasquez does a great job when it comes to controlling the bout right there. And if Whiplash goes with the vertical... Comes in with the vertical spinner for this one... Maybe they could bend the forks on Mad Catter and all that stuff and, like, render the weapon useless or something. Like, or make it harder for Mad Catter to use their weapon. Because their weapon was pretty reliable. So, regardless, I'm going Mad Catter for this fight. I think this will be a great fight, though. I cannot wait to see this one. This is going to be a battle of two titans for this midway major. Okay, next fight. Banshee and Switchback. So, on one side, we got another newcomer. We got Banshee, pneumatic style flipper created by David Small, who was part of Team Malice the previous few seasons. And, yeah, he's competed with in several lighter lighter robot competitions with, with, with flipper bots, including he runs his own competition down in Arizona, which Civilian Arc has been a part of, of a few times, so... Yeah, and so Banshee's opponent is Switchback. Switchback looks pretty fierce this season. Looks like they're going, rather, rather than like the drum spinner that they featured last season, going with more an egg beater styled spinner, similar to like what Riptide, Railgun Max, uh, Black Dragon, and in, in, in some of their configs as well. And yeah, regardless, Switchback looks pretty fierce. But I don't know about, I don't know... My one concern with Switchback, though, because, like, I do think their weapon is going to be a bit more powerful than what it was last season. Which it was pretty powerful last season, to be completely fair. But I think they just amplified the weapon power to it, if you get what I mean by that. So, I'm really not sure which direction to go here. Because, like, my concerns for each robot are, like, Banshee's a new robot this this season. We haven't really, we haven't really seen any fights from it, which makes it hard there and then switchback while i do think the weapon is going to do more damage than what we saw last season which was which was quite a bit too uh switchback we don't know we don't know about how like switchback's drive had some issues last season which could hold switchback back no did not mean to pun that but uh Regardless, though, like, this this is another tough fight to call. I think I'm going to lean towards Banshee on this one, but I could see this one going either way. So, literally so many of these fights, I feel, could go either direction. Alright, next fight. Hijinx versus Big Dill. And this one's interesting, like, because Big Dill is probably going to look a little different this season. Or, well, in this fight. So... Big Dill spinner this year, along with the lifter. I think they can do. I think they can do one, the other, or a combination of each. I want to. I want to say I might be wrong about that. Do not take my word for that. One, for that comment right there, I'm pretty sure that's the case, but only like a 45% sure on that or something like that. So they're up against hijinks. So. Yeah, and so Hijinx, another top 32 appearance last season, similar to their rookie season, after getting, after getting, yeah, first, first took a loss to Mammoth, then got a little bit of a controversial victory over Kraken, then a pretty solid victory, then a solid victory over Sub-Zero, and then got bodied by Sawblades, and 
took a pretty close loss to Whiplash then in their next showdown. So, yeah, so this fight, uh, okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go hijinks on this one. That's not because hijinks is part of my King of Draft team for this, for this season of BattleBots, uh, but, but, like, we haven't seen, like, the new weaponry of Big Dill in action yet. Like, I'm very concerned on, like, how well, like, it's going to perform in this one. Like, I definitely think, like, Emmanuel, like, has the better, is kind of, like, the better driver, at least in this fight, which Orion Beach is a great driver, too, regardless. It's, like, this this would be an excellent driving match, but my big concern is how, how much damage is that vertical spinner going to do if Big Dill even chooses to bring it in for this fight? Because, like, because, like, that, I'm not sure if that thing's going to be, like, do, like, a huge amount of damage, or if it's not going to do much, at least. If it's going to be more like a nibbler, or, and, if you kind of get what I mean by that. And, I think Hijinx definitely has, like, the better potential to do more damage in this fight, which is why I think I'm going to go with Hijinx. Or Hijinx could use the tail, also. I feel we could, they, they utilized the tail very well last season in most of their fights, like, especially, like, the fights with Sub-Zero and Whiplash, and we could, I feel we could definitely see that in this fight, so, they could definitely be using that to try to get the upper hand on Big Dill, whether that's, whether that's just simply try to get underneath them, or simply just hold back Big Dill long enough to spin up their weapon, regardless, though, this will be interesting, and can't wait to see the new Big Deal in action, because it's a great robot, so. Okay, last fight here, and boy, this is an awesome main event. We got Blip versus Endgame. So, Blip, return it, returning after debuting the new flipper tech of the Flywheel flipper system last season, and made it to the top eight. Then they're up against Endgame who made only the top 16 in the main competition last season, but then managed to win the entire Golden Bolt comp and managed to take home that Golden Bolt. So, yeah, this is this is going to be a good fight, in my opinion, and I hope we get to see a really back-and-forth performance between the, these two robots. But, yeah, and so some of my concerns for this one, uh, I think Endgame definitely has the advantage when it comes to doing damage to the opponent in this one like that's definitely what holds blip back in this fight plus the fact that that vertical spinner just packs a massive punch in there but then on the other hand i think blip probably has the edge with the ground game right well i don't know about that one actually uh i don't really i don't know about that one if i want to say they have the edge of the ground game because both of them are really good at that but I would probably say Aaron Hill's probably the better driver between the two of them, and I think Blip is probably the faster and a little bit more maneuverable than Endgame in this one. So uh, that's definitely some stuff Blip could take advantage of. But my big concern for Endgame, though, is like this is the same concern I had for when they fought Hydra last season. I don't think it's ever been proven whether Endgame's self-rider works or not. Like, like that big flip they took definitely went fine, because, like, they landed right side up in the end after that one. But we haven't really seen Endgame really need to try to test out and use that self-rider. And could this be the match where we get to see whether it works or not on Endgame? So... Yeah, which I yeah, because I don't think we've seen the self rider in action, at least as of my knowledge. I I could be wrong though, very easily. Like I wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise me if I'm just forgetting about a moment where they did use it or something like that. Like if they did use it in a moment, and I'm just forgetting about it. Definitely feel free to leave a comment down below. Oh, and absolutely, but. Yeah, so this is going to be a good fight. Like, I think I'm going to predict Endgame on this one. I think Endgame, I think that definitely the power in that vertical spinner and just their ability to kind of do damage is going to win them this fight. But I hope we get to see some great moments from Blip. My, my other concern for Endgame, though, is if they try out, like, a set of forks that might not work exactly, similar to what we saw, like, in the Hydra fight and even somewhat the Witch Doctor fight, at least, where their forks config didn't exactly somewhat it worked but somewhat other times it really didn't work but 
But yeah, regardless, this is going to be a great fight. I think this is going to be a phenomenal main event, and I cannot wait to see this one. So yeah, let's go ahead and check out my let's go ahead and check out my results of this prediction podcast. Okay, so here we are. So yeah, I'm predicting Sawblaze, Emulsifier, Valkyrie, Mad Catter, Banshee, Hijinks, and Endgame. We got seven more phenomenal fights. 14 great robots making their debut in this episode. So yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna close it out right here. So thanks for watching this podcast. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content as usual. There will be plans to do an episode two review for this podcast on on this and I think we got another great episode coming. Definitely leave a comment in the description. Definitely leave a comment down below with what your predictions are. I would absolutely love to hear what you all think of this fight card and what you who you think is going to come out on top in each of these matchups. So, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.